this. Uh, it's uh, the lighter side of the dark side. Your Thursday night freak show. What a studio! We got a packed studio tonight. It's amazing. She's back. I'm back. Nicole Six is back. Yeah. I was only gone for a week, but I guess it was a very long, long I, week. I, 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 I uh, termed it a hiatus, but uh, <laughs> you want to say give a toast to all of our hello, and hello. We have uh, some old uh, three three friends that have been on the show before. And one that uh, was supposed to call in once, but he got too stoned and did not. We have... Uh, I have a very good excuse. <laughs> I bet you do. We have, and I'm going, uh, we've got right uh, right close to the camera, Michael Simmons, the filmmaker extraordinaire, somebody who's always around beautiful, beautiful women, and uh, the creator of the L.A. Fetish Film Festival. Yes. Among other things, and we'll get to know some Fetishes other things Fetishes and you. surrounded by beautiful women? Mark, are you just booking guests to remind you of you? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And next to you, they, uh, obviously, uh, just one of the most beautiful women. We we love having you on the show. And I love you, being here. Michael is the one who brought you on the show for my birthday show, which uh, apparently our former co-host forgot about. But you, I didn't forget about it. You were all, you were always a delight. Last time you came with uh, the communatrix, who mm. apparently uh, seemed to really take a shine to Nicole Six, as a lot <laughs> of our guests do. But I do all right with the women. And uh, we have she, she's she's a, now she's writing films. She's uh, she do, she's doing smut at Sanctuary, all sorts of fetish events. You love her. You 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 want to get beaten by her, Allison Lay. <laughs> I love yeah. this. I should come here all the time just to I get do. my well, ego boosted. Right. <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, any any, hi, any more hiatuses? We might have a substitute co-host. I don't know. She'll whip everybody in the shape. Next to you, and it, it, was, it was very. It, I, I didn't know he was coming on. He, I didn't even know he was in town. He, and wearing an appropriate ministry shirt. Yeah. Uh, my friend, the uh, 420 comic. Thank you. Jeffrey Peterson. Nice to see you guys. Isn't Straight it from Denver. Is cheating if you're performing to people who are high? Because everything's so much funnier then. <laughs> well, they are a tough crowd. I mean, they can uh, they can be lethargic. So you got to really whoop them up, you know? <laughs> well, we'll see. Every time you tell a joke, look at Jeffrey and see if that's a tough crowd. Because it looks like he's uh, he's living up to his name tonight. From uh, look, look, at you, look at you right in the eye. I've, I've got Californication all over me. I'll bet you do. Can you smell that, Dana? <laughs> <coughs> it's, yeah. Yes. It smells, it smells a little uh, like it the sea. It smells delicious. Oh, yes. Because <laughs> next to you... It's been a long. It's been a while since you've been on the show. Last time you were on the show, you actually were a substitute co-host. You haven't been on in 2015. No, not yet. No, not this year. No, you uh, first time you were on, you bit me. Then the next time you were on, you got. <laughs> then the next time you were on, you got uh, electrocuted. Yeah, and, and then, then uh, breath play. You, you got choked, and then. Uh, the last time you were on, you were you were a co-host, and uh, we 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 oh we played strip strip poker. That's we right, we did play strip poker. It's uh, and then we ended the God, night chasing each other won't. around the table. The beautiful Jenna Sharp. Hello. <laughs> the beautiful Jenna Sharp. So let's get the sponsors and all this stuff out of the way real quick because we got a lot to talk about. Doomy's Home Cooking, we all love that. You ever been to Doomy's Home Cooking, Jeff? No, I have not. Well, if you get the munchies, this is the place in L.A. to go. It's uh, Doomy's Home Cooking, 1253 Vine Street, right where the M Bar used to be on Fountain and Vine. Okay. The best vegan food you've ever had. Like chicken fried steak, Philly cheese steak, Big Macs on the secret menu, the nachos. And I know you love nachos. Yeah. It was, we're named one of the 10 best nachos in L.A. by L.A. Weekly. The only one without meat, but you wouldn't even know they didn't have meat. Last time I had a pulled pork sandwich, I could barely finish it. It was so meaty and delicious, but there was no meat in it. Wow. Uh, I think that would be a taste explosion. That would be bizarre. It was a taste explosion in my mouth. Go to <laughs> Doomy's Home Cooking, 1253 Vine Street if you're in L.A., also, audible.com. We all love audible.com. Mm -hmm. If you go to darkmarkshow.com, you can get a free book, free audiobook, free 30 day trial at audible.com. I will just uh, put in marijuana here on uh, <laughs> audible.com. to listen to while high. And right here, Big Weed, an entrepreneur's high stakes adventure in the budding legal marijuana business. Free. That's six hours and 20 minutes. Smoke signals. A uh, social history of marijuana, medical, recreational, and scientific. There's so much stuff. Humboldt's. Life on America's Marijuana Frontier, the Marijuana Chronicles, uh, just uh, it's just uh, the, the Cornbread Mafia, all sorts <laughs> of marijuana. The last pirate going to pot, the, the, you, you can't lose. Let me see. There's so much stuff, so much stuff about marijuana. And if we put in uh, nylons, because we have the nylon girls here. Yeah, I forgot to mention this Allison. This is gonna be a weird search. Allison and <laughs> Allison and uh, there you go, Das Nylon Escort Girl and by La Val Valerie Nylon. One hour and four minutes. Looks like a real smutty book. You can get that free. Go to audible.com. Right there. Das Nylon Escort Girl. I don't know if it's in English, but it looks good. The cover is. already is looking good. <laughs> you had there's me no free. nylons on it. <laughs> as long as there's pictures. The picture is very nice. It's not yet rated, by the way. 
Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, I like Lots that. of that's German right. be pictures. <laughs> so that would well, it's an audible, so there's no pictures. You just hear it. But there's, I'm sure there's <laughs> descriptions of sexual sexual activity. In all over German, the place. German. Maybe you can look at it while you're on the internet. <laughs> so my friend, you have dirty like minds. It. So go to darkmarkshow.com. Click on the audible mm-hmm. button. Whatever you want, Fifty Shades of Grey, Stephen King, uh, and Steve John Grissom. Whatever you want, it's on there. It's on there. Just click on it, and uh, and you'll get a free book and a free 30 day trial. Also, one more. Uh, I, I, I can't even get it out because I can't believe Michael has uh, experience with these people. AdamandEve.com, the number one toy store yeah. on the, on the internet. It's yes, it yes. Yeah. Adam and Eve is the uh, largest distributor, I believe, in the world for uh, toys. And and yeah. and, and we're talking toys. We're not talking Tonka trucks. We're talking vibrators, lube, all sort, anal beads, all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, and they have a they have a very interesting. Uh, uh, way of selling it. I know this from because uh, I know everybody there very well. Right. Is tell me when said you, hi. I will. I almost bought uh, the president here, but he was busy tonight because they're all in town. They're based oh, okay. out of North Carolina. What Adam and Eve does, real quick, is assign you a counselor when you call in your order. And if you like the counselor, you get in a little dialogue about your taste, and they make recommendations. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if there's phone sex, Mark, but, you right. know, you can always call in and find out for us. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Well, yeah. well, well, well uh, the I would actually discourage people from calling in and using the code that I'll be putting on tomorrow <laughs> so that I can get the commission off the sales for adamandeve.com. And AdamMail.com, the number one gay sex toy store on the net. Now, you know, now why is there, uh, why, what is the difference between uh, Adam Mail and Adam and Eve? Um, I, my guess would be the uh, taste of the taste of the two uh, cultures, so to speak. They kind of mingle and kind of don't. The toys are going to be different. I think, actually, Allison who is so good at explaining... Allison, what would be the difference between Adam and Eve, a heterosexual toy store, and a homosexual toy store? Um, my guess would be that um, yeah, a hetero marketer is looking more at, um, at women buying the toys, and a, a gay male market, you're really looking for more hardcore. It's more, this is what you're using it for. Right, well, what, 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 <laughs> we bored people with our Adam and Eve. I can't believe we bored people with our sex toy... Uh, uh, our sponsor, but if you go to Adam and Eve or Adam Mail, we'll have codes tomorrow. Get some dildos, get some tech sex toys, get some anal bleed, anal beads, get some lube. Well, my guess would be also that there probably aren't as many flashlight um, on Adam commercials Mail. like popping up when you're like looking at a dildo. It wouldn't be a flashlight show up. Well, that's a good, the, that's a good thing about game. ordering on Adam and Eve is you don't get all the pop up ads and all the crap. You just go, you buy a sex toy, boom. Just go to go to the links that I'll be posting tomorrow. I'm already posting them. On our Facebook page. Sounds and, great. I need some new stuff. And one more thing before I go, because apparently Jenna and I were at the same place last night. We didn't even see each other. Yeah, what happened there? Well, this happened also last it, year. It got really full. Well, it got very full. This happened last year because I was doing my show at the fe- at the L.A. I keep saying Finnish Film Festival. The L.A. Fringe Festival. Fringe Festival. Right. The Hollywood Fringe Festival. I did my show last year. I ran into you at the tent at the Hollywood Fringe Festival. Mm-hmm. You were going to see somebody else's show. And apparently, I think that was my last show, so you couldn't see it. Yeah, it was like one of the last evenings. Right. Well, and, and so, but you can tell the Hollywood Fringe Festival is so much fun. It is. And, I had a blast. And, I was the actual very first person to purchase a drink. Oh, really? I was. Right. And were I still you, had to take a picture. And Tweedledee and Tweedledum were behind me. I remember Tweedledee and Tweedledum. <laughs> well, so. well, well, it's not too late this year because you can go see my new MN show. Yay. All new <laughs> Blue Balls Knoll. We'll be per- I'll be performing at, <laughs> you're listening to this live, <laughs> Saturday, June 13th. And you're laughing already, 8.30, the, this Saturday, June 13th, 8.30, Friday, June 19th at 7.30, Friday, June 26th at 10.30. What's the location? Which The location is at the Complex, the complex. Theaters, okay. right next to the, right next to the dra- Dragonfly. Dragonfly. <coughs> Excuse me, the Shepherd Studios uh, Theater at 6472 Con- Santa Monica Boulevard. If you go to HollywoodFringe.org, look up Blue Balls No, look up Dark Mark. You get all the information. Buy advance tickets on the site because they will be five bucks with the coupon code Goth. Yay! Put in Goth. Cool. And get a, well, you. I'll, cool. I'll copy you, but uh, our listeners, put in Goth, and uh, I will get. Uh, I will. Uh, I will definitely uh, get you a five dollar tickets. They're twelve. I'm gonna at the hold door. you to that. Oh yeah, no. Just tell me what. Just tell me what. <laughs> what day you want to go, and I'll, I'll, I will uh, definitely. Uh, 
hook you up, and then we'll go. To, we'll we'll get the first drink afterwards. Awesome. Because you can go get drinks, and then uh, and they have to, they have food trucks and the whole thing. You go see a play. You go back. You have some more drinks. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. it, it's just like the, especially since it's the dragonfly. The like dragonfly. Well, the dragonfly home sweet home is is mm -hmm. central for the. Yeah. They used they had a tent across the way. Now the party's at Dragonfly. You go mm -hmm. to Dragonfly, your party. You go see a show. You go back, have some more drinks, see another show. It's it's a, it's always a fun. Time. How long does this go on for? A month at least, right? Like three weeks. Three weeks. Uh, I think. Well, I this is the, this, this is opening weekend. Yeah. Oh, you love it. It's opening All weekend right. this weekend, and I think it goes through the end of at the end of June. Never so been. So many go. burlesque shows, Michael. You mm -hmm. have to go and see them. There's They're a lot amazing. of cool shows. There's a lot of cool shows. Cool, cool, good. But, but, but the LA Fetish uh, Film Festival is a whole different thing. You, have you ever been to the LA Fetish Film Festival, Nicole? No, but obviously most of you guys have. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, tell us about uh, how you came up with the LA Fetish Film Festival. I actually, um, it was kind of weird. Um, I. I directed a movie called American Fetish, and uh, I hooked up with uh, Sir Nick, Sal. Sir right. Nick, okay. And he kind of, I met him through another movie I did, but he came on board and introduced me to the entire scene in L.A. Now, were you in the scene already? No. 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 And I was not. You the, you were vanilla at one time, Michael said Yeah, but I have my fetishes, which made me overqualified. Oh, tell, tell, so, me, tell me about those. <laughs> Look at the nylon girls. Speaks so volumes. Pantyhose fetish. Tights, nylon, pantyhose. Just, I love, we'll get into how we'll that, that came Okay, up. okay, so. That's a so, whole okay, nother. So, okay, so, so go That's ahead. That's almost a whole nother show. I know. Trust me. <laughs> we, 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 I, 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 There's I, memoirs. <laughs> so you were vanilla and you, you made a, it was a, a documentary about the fetish culture? No, it was a. Uh, it's a movie that's all over Hulu, Voodoo, it's, it's a, it's a iTunes. It's a narrative film about, yeah, about it, the fetish it, culture. It, but just about broke me. It was shot in thirty-five millimeter film, mm -hmm. and it's a pretty good movie. Making it's finally making some money after five years, but uh, it's very enjoyable. I like it. And that, that's from Thank the expert, right there. <laughs> very sweet. You're talking yourself down. No, so so yeah, it, don't give yourself a hard time. So, 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 so American it, Fetish, the greatest film ever made. <laughs> well, I mean, you, were, you were ahead no, of your you were, good, you were ahead of your time though. I mean, that's five years before way ahead of my grade. time. No, it's it's I consider it my past. But right. it stunned me that in LA, with everything going on and fetishism, I always thought was almost more impactful and more and it's the experts say it takes more of a higher IQ to actually understand it clearly, and it sounds like a generalization, but it's been backed well, up. Well, let me ask the expert, uh, Nicole, since you have a higher IQ than I do, <laughs> would you say that's that's true? I haven't seen your film yet. Well, no. Uh, people with interest <laughs> fetish, in... Fetish in general. Oh. People with BDSM and fetish draws a more intelligent crowd, it ju and I will back that up right now in this show well, that's just with common everything sense. I've met. You have to be open-minded. You have to be able to put things together and be able to trust your own instincts. And the only way you can do that is to be very confident in your coherent reasoning skills. And exactly, and understand other people very well. Yes, you have yeah. to be able to put yourself yeah. in their position. Yeah, it really takes uh, a thought process. And by the way, that was the moment of intelligence by Nicole Sick. We're trying to have <laughs> one on every, every show. But anyway, so, can so, we start tiring up now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Maybe. now. Uh, so, go ahead. So, um, I, it just dawned on me that there's no fetish film festival here. And then it just, I, I have a massive creative epiphanies. And, and this was 2000, 2001? Yeah, this was actually. Or 2000, oh, no, 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 no. 2010, 2011. 2009. 2009, okay. I had the idea for a few years. And then finally I picked a partner who I will not name. Right. And um, <laughs> he was a doctor who promoted clubs on the scene. Right. A neurologist. Yeah. And he almost OD'd. So I had to drop him as a partner. So we really didn't get started till uh, 2011. Right. And it was, uh, I'd never, I produced tons of videos and movies and stuff like that. But I had never produced a large live event. And that is a whole nother planet. Absolutely. And it is far more difficult. And uh, it, because people are fluid and, you know, you're making, uh, you're trying to find an audience. You're trying to find taste. Right. Like what I like in fetishism doesn't mean she likes it, he likes it, she likes it or anyone else. Well, I like what they're doing right now. They're, they're flirting with each other. I like that. <laughs> like Jeffrey's right in the middle of that. Yeah, well, that I, would be an I example of a fetish. Well, next year I'm Mark starting the it. erection festival, so this is appropriate. Are you, anyway, are you serious? The erection festival? Maybe. 
Wait, 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 I'm, 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 I'm down. I'm looking at Jeffrey. I think that's a I got, oh, I got a half chub from that one. Yeah. <laughs> so we haven't even started the erection festival. It's, right. it's got a half chub. Okay. So that's like right out of the gate. That's can, great. Can you take performance enhancing drugs? Can, can you take performance enhancing drugs for this? Oh yeah, we insist on it. Oh, okay. That's fair. Yeah, we, we had I expect high performance. Oh, awesome. So. Who needs yeah, performance yeah, enhancing drugs are, with you two? <laughs> Yep. I can't even imagine. I mean, like, if you're really excited, come in 30 seconds. I'm going to get bored pretty quickly. Oh. Exactly. I'm going for longevity yeah, here. Yeah, you right. need, you oh, need okay. the drugs for longevity. <laughs> oh, all right, so it's not to get it's not to get it's to sustain it. Right. Mm -hmm. Precisely. Right. It's well, a I, long I, night. I don't, th I don't think, I don't think that's a, a problem for me either. But it, uh, It's an erection <laughs> festival. I want to be up for the challenge, so I got to speak. It, yes. <laughs> hey, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's, a, it's not going to be a short festival. That's no the fun for anyone. The first year was <laughs> really, really special. I mean, it was incredibly hard work. Uh, its success was very mixed, but right. you feel like you accomplished it. Right. And um, it, it was just uh, amazing. And I think you you guys were involved with the first one, right, to some degree? <clears throat> I came something? in at the second. Yeah. Second. Second. Yeah. Yeah. It was me and... Cat uh, Raven, who right. I think has been on this show before. She hasn't, but I love Cat Raven. She I'm hasn't? Very, she hasn't. I don't... I gotta, I gotta get her on. Sometimes she's we'll stoic. have to bring her. Please, yeah. yeah I, I think, I think that's what's gonna have to happen. Yeah, you have to inject I, the we, whiskey been, Jack directly into those veins. She's been and invited, she comes and, along. And, and, and I, we will have whiskey and Jack if she wants to come. Cat, if you're listening to the show, we will have no whiskey Jack. and Jack for you. I'll yeah. bring some. and ice. Whiskey and ice, fireball, whatever you want. It's we a, don't have ice. This is a thing too. Here's a little I'll piece of advice. I'll bring ice for Cat Raven. Yay! A little piece of advice on starting events in LA. We came up like. Instantly, me and the other partner who dropped out designed the logo. Right. And the logo was beyond perfect. And the logo created the branding. It creates the illusion. Mm -hmm. It creates the platform in your imagination of what it is. Right. Because over the years, we're going into our fifth year, it's been a little up and down. It's, right. it's very, as we know, this is not a great thing to say, but because there's not a lot of disposable income, nightlife in L.A. is tightened right. up. Right. So you have to really uh, be inventive and reach out and not lose faith and uh, be smart about what you're spending, not spending and doing and stuff like that. And, and it's about the time you thought up the nylon girls. Well, it's really interesting um, <laughs> because I see the festival as like the Lakers and the Nylon Girls as the Laker Girls. Okay. Except here's the thing is that uh, there, there's two or three things about the Nylon Girls. I want to make crystal clear is that every single individual who is a Nylon Girl is very smart, is a creative artist, is does not fit in any mold. And uh, is does has slowly, if not before, but during this process, embraced her sexuality, mm -hmm. her ability to exhibit what looks good on her sexually. And the greatest thrill I get out of this is really over the years to watch the women who have stayed with us or moved on grow from it. Right. And really go out on their own and right. build confidence and like. Allison and Jenna, I've known right. these girls for years, and I know a lot about them. But uh, <laughs> but no, to watch the growth of my, I consider two of my best friends, right. is fabulous. And Al Allison's looking at you very uh, very oddly. Now, how did you become a, that, I think we went over this, but how did you become a nylon girl? Oh, that's actually a really funny story. Oh, maybe um, we didn't hear this. Let's hear this. <laughs> So actually, I was introduced by a friend of mine to Michael who was working a wardrobe for the Nylon Girls at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, she brought me over and she's like, you need to do this. I know you need to do this. I know you'll be perfect for it. And we were at uh, an event at the Dragonfly, um, some Boulay Brothers event. Right. And uh, she brought me over and introduced me to Michael. And Michael... Took a look at me, we introduced each other, and what do you do? And uh, told him a little bit about myself in the scene. And, and, and were you Dom at the time? Uh, no, I was not. Um, you were subbing but at I the had, time. I would, and I had been doing a stage performance. Okay. Uh, and he took a look at me, and he said, okay, you do stage performance? That's good. Turn around. And I did a little spin, and he looked, stopped me, grabbed my hips, said, stay there. Looked at my ass and said, you're in. I'll see you, you at such a such a date. Talent, sir. 
I'll this see you at such and such a date I for knew, the auditions. I knew talking <laughs> to her, the IQ and talent was so high that there, I wanted to find the flaw, and there was no flaw. Actually, Ooh. Allison, a small note, she has a really large background in the BDSM world. Yeah, I've yeah, been in the I scene for no about eight about. years now. Yeah, uh, and we like all just know in the community right. a lot of the same people. And a lot of those people have come in and out of like the festival and helped and stuff like that. It's quite a community. It uh -huh. really is. And of course, there's... All sorts of drama within it and all right. sorts well, of, We'll, we'll talk know. about that. And by the way, also, yeah. I, I do like the, what you've done with the hair, the, the Betty Page Mohawk sort of thing. I, I think that, Thank you. That, so is a nice, that is a hot thing. But Jeffrey, I don't like what you've done with your hair, but that's kind of, you've always <laughs> the same hair. But Jeffrey. I, I was just told it made me look younger. Right. By, you by the lady sitting next to me on the plane. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very nice. Well, she I'll was 80. That. Yeah. <laughs> so, that. so you, but no, you, but you, you live in Denver now. I live in Denver, Colorado, the cannabis capital of the world. Now, here's the thing. Now, every comedian every yeah. comedian that I know, oh, trust me, I went to the edible store when I was out there. Yeah. Like, it's, it's like in a strip mall, like right, right next to a Target. It's really weird. But uh, I'm serious. It's like everybody's stoned at the mall, though. <laughs> yeah, you, well, everybody's Mark always and I stoned at the mall. I'm from Colorado. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, it was always around. Now it's just. Really around. Yeah, really <laughs> around, yeah. But Jeff, uh, first, Jeffrey was supposed to be on our show. We, were supposed to call, we had a 420 special last year. Yes. You were supposed to call in. I was a little busy. I was opening for Cheech and Chong, and I, at, at yes. the exact time I was supposed to call in, I was talking backstage with my two idols, just right. chit-chatting. These right. guys were, like, having me do, like, impressions for them. I mean, it was like I, I, I had their captive uh, attention and it was just right. it blew my mind so were I, you doing impressions of them in front of them no uh, it was hilarious <laughs> Cheech was asking me he was like hey not, do Gary Busey man and I'd be like okay I'm, I'm Gary Busey and then he's like <laughs> do McConaughey man do, do McConaughey and I'd be like oh, alright 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 you know so I just I just was it was weird that my the guys I looked up to are now asking me to do he does, impressions he, for him. Jeffrey does great impressions. <laughs> but uh, but as you know, almost every comedian, I'm maybe the one that doesn't, yeah. but every other comedian smokes pot. When did you develop the 420 persona? Because you had to probably, I would imagine when you started, you didn't, you weren't the 420 comic yet. Uh, I, I really started right out from the gate and uh, as the 420 comic, and I had several people say, that's probably not a good idea. You're going to pigeonhole yourself. And the weirdest thing is... Uh, like 10 years before I did comedy, I was in a singer in a metal band in, right. in Burbank, and uh, I would see George Lopez at the store. And he right. wasn't famous then yet. And he would just kind of mess with me like he'd see me, and and he'd I'd be stoned, and he'd go like, hey, Jeff, you know, you can buy stuff other than cereal or donuts, dude. And like he was, just, <laughs> he was hilarious. So then 10 years later, I got the guts to do stand-up comedy because I was really intimidated by it. And I bumped into George Lopez and I said, yeah, I'm, I got into comedy. And he goes, right. what kind of comedy do you do, man? I said, pot comedy. He goes, you got to stick with that, man. You could be the next Cheech and Chong. So, yeah. so I really just believed in it. And did, did, did you tell him that you've, you've discovered cheese and other things? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, well, my status has really gone up in the world. I've started buying higher class pot foods. Uh, right. Well, I just discovered a vegan place that serves uh, pork. <laughs> so I'm going to go there. <laughs> but, 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 uh, but, but it's funny because you were the first... Uh, specialized pot comic that I had seen. Yeah. And now there's Stoner Rob, there's Little Michael, there's other guys. So what separates you from, and, and there's millions of comics that smoke pot and talk about pot on stage. What differentiates your act from the, from everybody else? I'm older than those guys. Well, that's true. <laughs> More experience. I'm just kidding. No, I'm, you know what? Uh, this has come straight from the heart. It's There's no pretense in this. I'm not trying to follow a wave or anything. I just was really inspired by that genre of of comedy, Cheech and Chong, where I just always loved Cheech and Chong and George right. Carlin and that kind of stoner, hippie comedy. And um, I, I really saw that that was missing from comedy. And there's some other guys that do it. I don't even want to name them. Cause, right, because I just named them. But, uh, uh, but, but but when you started doing it, there wasn't, there wasn't that many. I mean, no, there really wasn't. And, and my, pot wasn't as available then. It wasn't. And uh, that's where I, I'm a 24-year cannabis activist. So before that, when I was in a metal band, we were singing about legalization. So Wait, what, what metal band were you in? I was in a band called Night Riot and we were Night Riot. <laughs> Night Riot. <laughs> when they ran out of pot. <laughs> from, from 88 to get this, from 88 to 92, we were the number one 
uh, drawing metal band on the strip, and we were a Christian metal band. I was going to say, you must have spent a lot of time. Wait, 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 Night Riot was a Christian metal band? Yes, we were. <laughs> wow. What, yeah. made, what made you Christian? Oh, we, just our lyrics. I mean, we were Christians. Just our like, lyrics. Pardon me, the guys in the band were Christians. And wait, 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 what's, what's, what's an example of a Night Riot Christian song? Uh, Serve Thy Master. <laughs> Kind of like what Allison yeah. might sing. Right. Yeah. You know, like, no, it sounds way too much it, like BDSM. It was, right. exactly. Thank it, you, Jenna. It, it was pretty unbelievable because we were we were uh, influenced by Black Sabbath and Judas right. Priest and right. Iron Maiden. And the amazing thing is Ronnie James Dio would come to our shows and right. watch me sing Ronnie James Dio songs to him. And that blew my mind. Well, so. it was one of the best things that I, that I that I that you do, but you kind of have to do it to me because not every audience gets it. Is that you sing Ozzy singing Dio and Dio singing Ozzy? I do, Funny. I do, because it would be it'd be so awesome. Because I I, I remember on a ride to San Diego, we were you you were doing that to me, and we were rolling in the back seat. The two guys in the front had no idea what we were talking about. Yeah, you have to know Ozzy and Dio. But the funny thing is, like, remember when Elton John and Billy Joel did that tour and they did each other's songs? Right. That'd be great if, you know, Dio and Ozzy did that because it'd be like, crazy, but that's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ozzy, just a rainbow in the dark. <laughs> Just a rainbow in the dark, you know. I'm sorry, me and him were just laughing in the backseat. When is your next show in L.A.? Well, uh, my next go. show is uh, tomorrow night. At, I'm headlining in Fusion Lounge at Universal City Walk. Wow. Mm. What, what time is that? That show is at 8 p.m. Awesome. Okay, well, my show's at 8.30. But anyway, uh, Jenna, <laughs> Jenna Sharp, we love Jenna Sharp. Indiana, House, Indiana Housewife. I know, you, you oh, wait, that's naughty. your go-to. No, wow. no, but I'm just trying to get the context. Now you're you're everywhere. Every I see I saw you Sunday at uh, at uh, at uh, uh, and you were looked amazing at uh, at Paris's club. Oh yeah, I, I started. Going, I started going to, now that we're talking about like Christian death metal, right. um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I started going to church on Sunday, and yes. uh, you know there's like the spankings and wax play. It's a, it's a different type of church and grinding. <laughs> And oh, it's, it's good. It's fun. Yeah, alcohol, lots of good music. Actually, it got, was a fun time. It was, <laughs> I, I, I missed it was you because you were time. there. Uh, no, I had a, the guy. You, you, you did end up talking communion. to my partner, apparently. So. Did I? <laughs> you did. Okay. <laughs> he I'm, mentioned that he met you. Oh, I think he came up. Oh, okay. I see. Uh, yeah, he came up to me. I was wondering who that was. Uh, and then the, the guy dressed like Dr. Frankenfurter from Rocky Horror hit on me. Holy but, shit, I found that guy yeah. on Facebook, and I was like, I have got the biggest crush on you. He's pretty high. Oh, my God. Ooh, he did, you also, did you see the rest of his pictures? He does a Well, Mark, you're a good kick kisser. Ass, I, like, I, I, you Willy have no Wonka. idea. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Those soulful eyes and the big arms that yes, say, yeah. I'll make you feel safe. I actually became <laughs> big a, safe a Johnny bear. Depp sandwich because right. I had, <laughs> they had a lot of Johnny Depp there. hands on one side of right. me. And then uh, uh, Jack Sparrow on the other. Yeah, they had a lot of Johnny Depp's uh, rolling around. So yeah, I, See, I, I, Speaking I, of bizarre fetishes, that's a yeah. fetish. <laughs> Johnny Depp fetish, Just, yeah. yeah. Johnny, Johnny Depp. Depp. I have a, I have a fetish nylon? for Rango. Does that count? Yes, the Rango. <laughs> <friends stuck out. laughs> so, but they they had a guy that used to go to, uh, to like the the clubs a long time ago, and he he had costumes for every single Johnny Depp movie. Every time a Johnny Depp movie would come out, the same week he would be like trying around Bar Sinister with that costume. It was very strange. But uh, speaking of that, I was going to say, Jenna is, uh, a, a, and I I haven't actually uh, addressed this on the show, but you are in phenomenal shape. I've said that before. Oh, thanks. <laughs> but you're, you're you're muscular, but feminine. How do you achieve that? How do I achieve feminine? Muscular but feminine. <laughs> I, I, it's I, 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 I being a girl, women, right? Not feminine. <laughs> by by being, I was born with this, you know, no, but uterus you see, that like creates No, but you've seen girls with so. uteruses that are mu muscular <laughs> that just, they, they lose the femininity. I don't know. Um, okay. I actually don't feel sometimes that I look that feminine because the last time I was in West Hollywood, I had a gentleman come up and he said, well, my partner and I have this bet going. Are you an M to F? Oh. Oh. And I was like, um, no, HRT. I'm not. And they were like, okay, thanks, and walked off. I was like, dude, no, who won? I want to know who won the bet. That's, that's <laughs> male to female for our people that don't, uh, yeah. Jenna, also from I, a, You don't look like an M to F to me, I'll tell you uh, that. From a photographic point of view and everything, she has probably got the God's bone structure for a face to photograph. Absolutely. Yeah, her body is fantastic. Her, just from an objectification point of view. Every her, picture of this woman comes out fantastic. That's I, not I, true. I burn like, the ones that look bad. <laughs> well, that works too. She can't take a compliment. She cannot take She's a compliment. She's never She's less. got a beautiful voice for radio. I've told her that before. 
It's because I sound like a dude. She's no, you never don't sound like a three quarters chub. <laughs> no, no, that's, uh, no, that's uh, yeah, if yeah. you uh, yeah, if, uh, if you're less than seven days of a chub or three quarters of a chub on this woman, you're not I on the show. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> you're not on the show. But, yeah. How did you become? A, I didn't even know you were a nylon girl. How did you become a nylon girl? I've been a nylon girl for a long time. I don't think I've ever seen you in nylon. I actually was stage manager for a couple of years. We actually, she, uh, I do prompt. We shoot tons of HD video, right? And this year, I right too. Now we're coming up with a plan to uh, actually get it distributed worldwide, right? And we're cutting stuff. And I cut a promo of uh, Jenna that I need to send you via Facebook okay. of about three or four minutes. Do you remember that one? When you guys were uh, interviewing me? Yeah. when you, Your audition, yeah. which we need to talk about the audition. Let's, let's talk about the yeah. audition. And it was fabulous. I mean, it was like she, the shooting, the editing, everything just came together so, so, so Allison, you look at her ass. Day, too. The auditions are so much fun. My, uh, my first one I went to... Right. The interviewers were fabulous. I also got tied up, right? Like uh, yes. Chris Kiss tied me. Like, they had an overhead bondage, hook. Had an overhead hook. They like on a had crane. my arms, my feet all yeah. tied together. And I was doing like acrobats just because, you know, and, it yeah, was do fun. That. And she was, there were three girls there that day. It was you and Elizabeth Reed. Elizabeth. Velvet Vixen, she calls herself uh -huh. now. And uh, the other girl who kind of like cried and wimped out and ran because she was totally into bondage. But the moment you took a rope out, she collapsed. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. 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 And Chris was uh, like, can I tell you up? Like, yes, please. Too. Oh, we had Hands some feet? great... Hands yes, right. please yeah. do it. Right. And, right. And Jenna and Liz just both took off like a rocket, and they're both... Right. Uh, um, we should talk about the auditions. Why don't you talk about the auditions? Because you're going to have auditions for the Nylon In Girls. In two days. Wow. Let's talk about the auditions. And if your car breaks down in front of where we're doing it, we might let you in to make a phone call. Uh, but Allison. you will get will a little bit of a up. sneak peek. So are you going to be tying up girls at this audition? Maybe. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Okay. That yeah. sounds fun. Let's do that. So. Wait, wait, Michael's already said yes. We have basically, to know which ones are going to hang around. Basically, <laughs> I have a list in my pocket, but that's too what, busy what, to look what, at. What, 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 what makes a nylon girl? What, in your opinion, makes a nylon girl? What are you looking for? I think the bottom line is attitude. And it's we, most of the nylon girls we've always worked with were never really good totally over the top right. and you know within the group there's you know like a little infighting and i have the sure. dirt and drama but there's actually very little of it we love and, each other uh, we really yeah, do. everybody comes together in the end and i haven't been too much of a lech and i think that helps but i can't help it it's in my genes right so to speak yeah we, and, we got it <laughs> it's out of his genes honestly but i think michael tries jokes. to pick fights so that we're like Mirror, mirror. Oh my like, god! Oh, tickle fight or like a pillow fight or something, and we're like, oh my god, I love you so much. No, it's I've okay. had some big time producers <laughs> in Hollywood see the footage, and they go, "You have to create conflict. Right. Conflict is interesting, like girls ripping clothes off and stuff oh, yeah, like no, that." that I, I, I understand that, which I, which I don't agree yes. with. No, I, I'd rather no. just see, yeah, but no, yeah, no. no. We, we really try to concentrate on the empowerment of. Of of this person right. who happens to be female, I'm sure you maybe down the line, if things change within you, you might want to start the nylon boys, and I can license that to you. <laughs> thought, thanks a lot. It's a maybe. Though. Well, speaking, speaking of tickling, I was I was on because uh, uh, Nicole will tell you I do a lot of research on my female guests, right? Lots of research. Lots of hours and hours of research. research. Yes. I, was re I was researching. You could say I was you got pretty tied up. Researching. For this uh, one. I was researching. Uh, <laughs> I was researching uh, Alice. Uh, uh -huh. I, was, so I was on your busted. website today. Mm -hmm. And a lot of tickling. Uh, yeah, actually, a lot of those pictures are uh, from shoots I did with the Nylon Girls or from events I did with the Nylon Girls. So you are ticklish? I'm incredibly ticklish. Really? Oh, my I'm God. My favorite ticklish. memory is a problem is, in my life. Whoa. It was Nikki. It was Mistress Nikki it Nefarious. Was. Nikki she Nefarious. Was, oh my God, that was one of my favorite memories oh, yes. with you guys. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Well, please, please. That's please actually, tell I think us, that's the pictures audience. he's talking about. Yes, no, Nikki Nefarious <laughs> was tickling you. We were at Club Bazaar. We were, yeah, we were at uh, at Cernix Club Club Bazaar, and the nine nine nine, right? Yeah. Three three three. It was a oh. three three three. Yeah. Nikki oh, was, was there. She was doing bondage. She actually tied me and David up together and spun us like in front of the crowd. Right. So we were suspended. Yeah, you know. And then well, yeah, just she's... for I don't know if it was for fun or what, but I was like in really enjoying watching Nikki tie Allison up. And then all of a sudden she's sitting her down like on her lap and right. she just starts tickling her. And I was like, <laughs> I've never seen someone so happy in my whole life. <laughs> yeah, the pictures already. of Nikki's face. Soon she's just lit Netflix. up like a Christmas tree, and I'm. 
I'm, I'm laughing so hard I'm almost in tears. I mean, <laughs> but she had a great time. I had fun, but... Yes, I'm incredibly ticklish. Yeah, so because um, I can go over and tickle you right now if you'd like. Mm. Okay, mm. so uh, <laughs> I'm t- I don't I'm know if the mics right would now. like the noise that came out of my mouth. <laughs> right, I'm tickling no, her right love, now. No, that's the cutest thing. Do you like snort when you like when you get tickled? And stuff? Oh no, I scream. Like I squeal <laughs> oh, I gotta see and I that. scream. Come on, somebody tickle her right now. Right. Right. Serious, real serious. I gotta, I gotta hang this. with her for a while, so I have to be good. Right. So yeah, I'll get hit. Right. So anyway, so. You, I Good boy. I can't tickle you, uh, uh, Mr. Salazar. Oh. That means you have to stand up. I got to stand up. Hold on. Uh, Nicole, I'm going <laughs> to please uh, t- comment on this, please. I was going to say, yeah, it's, it's a brave man who goes in and tries to tickle a dominatrix. That's what right. I was thinking, Like, too. the last person who tickled me, I actually, because um, I do still switch on occasion, I took a tickling session. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually headbutted the guy <laughs> so she's, hard she's a lot of that he had a welt on his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> she will bite you. Yeah. All right. I will. It's true. Thank you, Alice. I leave well. <laughs> now, uh, uh, Jeffrey Pierce is not just a talented stand-up comedian and an impressionist. Indeed. Now you are venturing into Nicole's former territory and making comic books. Yes, I am. I'm, thank you for bringing it up. I'm really excited. I was on a TV show called... Of the marijuana show, which uh, is go a, figure, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yep, it, it's on uh, it's on uh, YouTube and marijuana dot com, but uh, it is well, the wait, wait, sh- marijuana show has marijuana dot com. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah, and it's uh, it it was the Shark Tank for stoners, and I <laughs> stoners. I gotta go on marijuana dot com. It's true, and um, <laughs> the funny thing is, uh, of the ten contestants, I was the only one that got an investment. Very nice. Yeah. Good for cool. you. Thank you. Cool. I'm, a, I'm a tenacious bastard, and I right. just wouldn't say no for an answer. So uh, that gave me the ability to to create my new comic book. Now, I'm, I'll explain the two stars of the show, uh, uh, Wendy Robbins and Karen Paul, are a lesbian couple from Taos, New Mexico. And they gave me a challenge on the show to make a comic book about them, about a, a lesbian couple. Whoa. So I created... That's awesome. Rainy Day Women. Awesome. Very nice. And that is my lesbian super duo. Apologies to Bob Dylan. Right. Uh, they didn't know at the time that I was... <laughs> <laughs> like he's going to mind. <laughs> yeah. They didn't know at the time that I was raised by lesbians in here in L.A. So right. I had a lot of great insight. So, so you, you had two two mothers. I had two moms in the now 70s. it makes sense why you like women. Yeah. And, you know... <laughs> Hey, I'm telling you, it was tough because, like, nowadays there's Ellen DeGeneres, right, and Portia de Rossi. There's, like, lesbian role models. When I was a kid, the only role models I had were Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> that was tough. Well, there was Maude, too, but... Uh, it was hey, Maude. Quick, quick question. I think this is on a lot of listeners' minds. Like, during your performance, do you actually, like, have Plays a bong up. with you? Yeah. Well, now I do because it's in Colorado, it's legal to consume. So in the middle of my set, someone will undoubtedly come up and, you know, make me get high in the so middle of my set. This is why I wanted to do some shows with you in Colorado. Yeah. And you flaked. I don't know. But but so you're, uh, you're actually doing comedy and people are doing bongs in the audience. Yes. And I want to actually, you know, uh, book you ahead of time. We'll figure it at, out. We'll at figure it out. The Speakeasy Vape Lounge where I do my show, Can I Get a Laugh? We'll figure it out. We'll figure Can it out. Can I Get a Laugh? Can I get a laugh? <laughs> Um, uh, and, uh, so people are vaping while yeah, you're on stage. They're vaping, they're dabbing, they're doing the whole, you know. Oh, it, dabbing, I did. They're eating once. edibles. Jesus. But it's great because uh, tourists now come over from all over the world. You'll yeah. like, you'll be hanging out, and there's people from Finland over here and Spain and stuff. Right. So, and, and is it? I, I, it's and to, to answer your question, Nicole. It's easier when people are stoned to make them laugh. Oh, I know it that. It is, yeah. I asked it's, if it was and, technically cheating. And I mean, people spend cheating, so no. much time pumping the audience full of alcohol. If you're also getting them high, you're just like shooting no, but, fish but, in a but, barrel. No, 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 but, but, he's uh, right, but people though, could bomb, though. Because pe- there's a delayed reaction, there so you got to be very on point. And you know what's neat about, I've had Mark in my, my show, The Dopest Show on Earth, like several times, and... And Mark, Mark is just great to look at. They'll start laughing before he says a word. <laughs> you should walk out to my life. That there. guy's cool. It's like a cartoon kid. Like, dude, the monsters are here. You know, <laughs> like, and I trip on. And I, every now and then, because I talk fast, I got to stop and let them catch up a little yeah. bit. And then you keep going. But uh, <laughs> you're you're very stoner friendly. I'll say that. No, no, no. <laughs> the, the stoner people love me. And uh, but uh, so uh, so the the nylon goes now. I nylon. 
Now, I've seen pictures. Dude, this is, and I talked to you last time you, we were here, and I remember last time you were here was, was my birthday show, and you you looked at Bree Walker like most of our guests look at Nicole. It was a whole thing, but uh, we had. <laughs> well, I'm old enough to have watched her for years. Right. Do the news. Right. Yeah. But, but the, the, and, and go and, through her. And the other thing is when, you know? when when people fetishize pantyhose. Especially in the fetish, Tights, in the fetish nylon, scene. Normally it's high waisted panties. No, no, no. But, sheer but, but, black. Well, this is what I'm. <laughs> right. Could you stand up for a second? Oh, I'm not wearing any underwear. <laughs> Could you stand up for a second? <laughs> no, I don't want to sing if you're too. nylon girls like material. The, tease. the response. This is how I describe how okay. this whole thing. Okay, there's uh, Nicole standing up. She's. Yes. Looks. What do you think? I won't say. You tell Seriously me. Seriously high chub factor. Is oh no, those jeans are skin tight. The in moment, her pocket. Turn around. No, it's like her tie. There's a reason. Oh, okay. Well, they do the same. You were looking very closely at her. She's got a condom with her. My dick is so small it'll work. But so you were looking very intently at her ass, Jenna. Uh, well, of course. Yes. That's the point, Isn't right? that what we're supposed to be doing? That's, that's what I was when doing. When she turns around, there's no breasts. I'm gonna look at her butt. Nicole, those are stretch jeans, right? <laughs> Honey, those are stretch well, those skin jeans, tight, right? stretch, stretch. They're tight. stretch yes, jeans. They are a material right. that are skin tight yeah. because yeah. I have and a huge they're, thing they're, for Mortal Kombat. They are <laughs> skin tight. They're really more of a pair of tights that look like jeans in the opposite. Ah. Just walk yeah. up and down Van Nuys Boulevard or over on Flower Street. Right. <coughs> but what I, what, I, what I was going to say is when in the fetish scene especially, when most people fetishize hoes, it's usually the with the garters and like the fish nets here and things is, like that. Here is where this came from. Okay. When I was in junior high, all the mini skirts swept in. And right. it was this is the late sixties, early seventies. Right. And it was torture, torture for all of the guys cause skirts just got shorter. Right. And you got shots of garters, shots of butt and leg. And you're 13, 14, 15, and you're right. walking with a nuke chub. Right. Okay. You have no, no, that's why these school yeah. teachers can't keep their hands off these 15 year olds, right? If, if, if you're, if you're lucky, chubby. a little, yeah. yeah if you're lucky, like, you get a little, totally. little bush, little, yeah. Yeah. Well, with a hose, the girls would wear it with even shorter skirts and sometimes not wear underwear, right. thinking that they're securing a hose. And there's, I, we might have to beep this out, but I'm going to take no, no, a no, chance No, 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 there's here. nothing to be beeped out. Here we, we go. Go ahead. Once in a while, you could actually get a shot of like 15, 16-year-old Bush. Right. Through the hose. Oh, please. Bush is, and yeah. Ev, uh, you know, from that era, that and was And that was the 60s. Huge, yeah, the 60s. It yeah, was hairy. 60s, 70s. It was big. It was hairy. Well, yeah, but things tightened up. Got right. trim. Yeah, I'm working right. on having Bush make a comeback. Not Sexually, not politically, but right. uh, I'm going with Clinton. Oh, I'm just kidding. Right. I'm, 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 yeah, we're not talking about we're not, we're not talking about the band either. Here is though how this came about. Right, is um, uh, when I graduated film school, I actually just fell into a uh, touring rock and roll. I had right. I work with War. I work. I uh, I actually did three months with Earth, Wind, and Fire. I didn't know that. Yeah, on their tour, the, one of the most amazing events of my life. It's great. And then. Um, then I, uh, and I weighed 80 pounds less. And <laughs> yeah. And uh, so anyway, I did, I flew up to San Francisco and did two uh, midnight New Year shows with the Tubes. Okay. Remember the Tubes? I remember the Tubes. Oh, yeah. Great band, the Tubes. Right, right. Their dancers wore little, three little pieces of tape. Right. Or two on the breast, over the nipples. Right. They wore the sheer tan hose with three playing cards over the bush and oh. went out and danced right. on stage. And I'd never seen anything like that. And with Mr. Visualist here, right. it shifted my DNA. Yeah. Then I came up with the idea that the nylon girls should look a little bit like the Droogs out of right. Clockwork Orange. Right. Because they wear the hose, can be any type of hose or tights, right. uh, suspenders, and once in a while, we put the nylon girls in little different kind of derbies or caps. I've seen and it. And it is an amazing look. And here's the trick. Right. The underwear is on the inside, not the outside, like your Vegas dancers or whatever, right. Broadway dancers. I wanted the look to be like if you're walking down Wilshire Boulevard at noon on a Wednesday 
and all these dresses got magically removed and the women's underwear got exposed right. because most women do not dress like Victoria's Secret models. They're getting dressed in the dark. They do right. mismatches. The only thing they worry about is that it's not even if it's clean, but they're kind of covered. Right. And maybe the type, type Jen, of Jen and Allison are looking at each other skirt. like, what the fuck are you talking about? Well, first off, back up. The tubes. Three playing cards. Was it like three of a kind? It was like a straight flush or what? I mean. It I'm depended trying, on the bush. Okay, I'm trying and, to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, and Allison was like. there dealing out the cards beforehand. Yeah. And Allison, <laughs> you must trim because you're like three playing cards. <laughs> I mean that I understand. No, my my face was at the idea of not putting on, not caring if my underwear were clean. Yeah. <laughs> that was, Everybody that was here has clean me. underwear except for Nicole. She's not, not wearing any. Here's the yeah, thing, but though, that's Mark, because I don't just, think underwear is sanitary. That's just fair. in closing, <laughs> most of the girls have never heard this speech, but it's funny because her friend who got her into this, Rebecca, and like Cat, instantly got it. And right. these people think anti-fashion right. and anti-unconventional um, uh, eroticism. Right. And to me, that's what gets me going. Like, you right. know, after a while, somebody being fully naked, you're like at a nude beach. Well, I was going to ask you. you just worry about where, like, the concessions are. Well, yeah, you're, talking, you're talking high-waisted. Would you rather see a girl in granny panties? Than a thong? If they're super tight and sure and black, unlike on Nicole. But my favorite thing to do is to wear the the, the thong, right? Right. And really low. Right. But then to have the pantyhose high. Yes. Right, with the suspenders. Because because around, I, I would say probably the 90s, I guess, pantyhose was out. Like, women used to always wear pantyhose. It is making mm -hmm. a gigantic comeback. Right. I just read an article in the Wall Street Journal because it's all about money. Right. You know, fashion money, Madison Avenue. They used to come it's in the egg and the whole thing. coming back. It's well, huge. In my comic book days, I used to just wear shorts and fancy little tights. Like, you know, you have the lace tights. You have right. all sorts of different types of tights. I'm wearing yes. shorts and nylons right now. Did anybody tickle you? Or, uh, no one would have tickled me. Oh, okay. I don't know if I'm I write you. scary stories. Okay, okay. <laughs> Allison, please stand. Oh, wow. Look yeah, at that. exactly. It's a great look. And I like it because it keeps everything tight and you can bend over without having to worry about showing anything. Just like like goes right up but yeah. well, the thing is, these two well, women, you can put them in potato sacks, they're, they're going to be beautiful. Truly. I do look good in a potato sack. Right. Another thing about, I, uh, I by the way, tried it. this is this basically is actually high-waisted. <laughs> I just have a very long torso um, because I'm 5'9". But uh, uh, as far as high-waisted stuff actually goes, like these are my ribs. You know, we could have done a makeover here. I just realized that. But um, <laughs> the concept is a lot of times keeping you in shape. It'll actually make it tighter if you're wearing tylon, or nylon, sorry. Yeah, and yeah, I was trying to yeah. find tights and nylons. Uh, but it'll just naturally tighten the same way like a girdle would. Well, but, that, last mm -hmm. night, a, fr a very good friend of mine called me up and said, I threw my back out. Can you bring some Soma and Norco over? <laughs> and I was like, gee, I just ran out, you know. <laughs> and I said, what we should do, though, is get you a great pair of support hose, cut it off at the knees, Open the crotch for convenience, of course, you know. Totally you really like nylons. Professional. <laughs> Mark, you could have been my co-assistant surgeon there. I mm. don't know. Uh, geez, I, 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 you, do you scrub mm. up well? I like to think so. He might have an so. odd bedside manner. I'd like to think so, but I don't know. Have you you really think I would it have takes a little adjusting. You've got to take all the patients. I, half, my, half my dates are, are redressing women, I swear to God, and they yeah. love it because I a friend of mine is a really <laughs> famous editor, this woman. She's a little overweight, right. and she's gay, and she goes, I'm sick of dressing plain. So on Facebook, six women came in on, told her what to do. Right. I said, screw that. I went, got samples of like a mix between an SOA look and a hardcore cowgirl look. Pick the photos this out. You need a leather jacket. You need this. Well, I don't look good because I'm big. No, you don't realize that dark colors can do this and that and all that. Right. And she goes, you know what? Out of all my female friends, my male friend helped me the most on how to dress. Boy, I, wish Mike, I wish Michael would have taught my two moms how to dress. That would have been awesome. Uh, yeah. a, lot, a lot of flannel, huh, Jeffrey? Hey, bring them on the next A lot of flannel show. in the 70s, yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> and overalls, too. What was overalls that? Overalls, and, 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 but I'm sure they had pantyhose, too. Where does the time go? It's amazing. Jenna, what, what are we doing? What, how do people get a hold of you, and what are you doing? So you're going to be at the Fed, I mean, you're gonna be at the Hollywood Fringe Festival <laughs> hanging out. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there frequently You'll at be, the Fringe. You, and then um, the Nylon Girls auditions, which is on Saturday. You guys didn't say where, where it was. Where yes. is the audition? 
Uh, it'll be at Melrose Light Space. Okay, there we go. Get, Melrose Light find Space. Find me or Allison or Jenna or Kat on Facebook. Facebook. It's the Nylon Girls. Nylon Girls auditions right. were all over the place. And if you can't figure that out, don't show up. And and it helps if you <laughs> it helps if you like to get tied that was up. Really, really funny. <laughs> if you like to get tied up. If you have a fetish, that's even better. So oh, really, I, I I love bondage. Bring something new to the so, nylon girls, and bring a nylons. Yeah, please. please. Do they have to bring their own bring nylons some. or? Uh, no, I've got. You don't have no, we to. have the nylons. Yeah. Bring your own. You, I, I imagine you with a whole drawer full of nylons. Uh, drawer full. Oh, just a drawer? I was like, I'm not telling me. I don't know. Probably have thirty cubic or forty cubic feet. See a room? Because I shoot videos too. I have <laughs> right. so much stuff. It's unbelievable. Forty cubic feet of nylon. I have the hardest time throwing away any nylon. I don't even care how ripped up they are. That's still I, useful. I That's just a different yeah, look. The nylons. ones are cool, I just too. keep the them forever. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so, so I have a, I have an entire one of those great big suitcases. Right. That ha is on wheels. And, full of nylons. And now, I can't now, get rid of them. And now, well, trust me. Now all of our listeners and viewers will be like, "I'll help you get rid of them." But uh, <laughs> uh, Jeffrey, uh, how do we get the? How do we get the? Uh, the, the uh, Rainy Day Women and other comics of yours. Well, it is L.A. Pride Month, and uh, I will be celebrating that tomorrow, uh, 8531 Santa Monica Boulevard at Tea Garden Smoking Accessories. I'll be doing a book signing of my comic books from 3 to 5. At Tea Garden Smoking Accessories. Yep. Open 8531 what are, what are Santa Monica on. Boulevard. So, 8531? So if you're a lesbian or you like okay. lesbians and you like pot, come on down and get a signed copy of this. I would say pretty much almost everyone tuning into this probably likes lesbians and yeah. pot. Everybody, and everybody loves lesbians and pot. And, 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 you, and, and how do people get a hold of you? Uh, do you have a website or are you just Facebook and all that? Um, people can get a hold of me on Facebook, to Twitter, the whole Instagram go. thing, all that There you go. All that stuff. And uh, Rainy day women. Tomorrow I'll be at uh, the uh, Infusion Lounge headlining there tomorrow at Universal City Walk, and then Saturday I'm at the Clown House comedy show. Yeah, the, 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 the scene at the Clown House, see me tomorrow night. Ugh. Okay. I was just going to say, it's a bummer we didn't get to talk about it because the moment you're discussing yourself, I'm like, you must have spent a lot of time at the Rainbow. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait a second, I got that reversed. So go see him tomorrow night at Fusion Lounge. I might, I might check that out. Okay. And then see me Saturday night. But anyway. Go to Jeffrey at Peterson yeah. at the complex. Go to Jeff Jeffrey Peterson, and always, always fun, always a fun time. Anytime, Thanks, you, anytime buddy. you're in town, you're welcome on the show. We got so much more to talk about. We'll talk about all your rainbow days. Yeah, hanging oh, yeah out that, with that would be body fun. count and just a rainbow in the toilet. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> Allison. Uh, I think she's laughing more than when I tickled her. Allison, your your website is Miss Allison Lay. Right. Lee. Miss Allison Lee. Lee. L-E-I-G-H. Yeah. Like L-E-I-G-H. Yes. Excuse like me. Like Vivian Lee. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> but on, on Instagram, you're Ms. M-S Allison. Yes. Lay. And just go to everywhere. Just go to your website, Miss Allison Lay, and uh, see the, t the tickling pictures and everything else, right? <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm on all of the social media networks. You can find me. Yes. And, uh, and, and, and uh, Michael, how do people get a hold of you? Um, <clears throat> through the L.A. Fetish Film Festival on uh, Facebook or my personal, I do answer PMs and stuff. Right. But I wanted to do one quick plug. The festival is in November. Right. It's being planned right now by the team. Right. And we are looking for video submissions. They can be one minute to five minutes, anything to do with fetishism. Right. And I don't want stuff downloaded right. off of porn tube. <laughs> we Creative, want original, original, artistic, fetish-driven, can be sexually themed heavily, but we're the think art. Right. You're not going to shock them. If you want to make an impression, it's going to have to be deep. Right. Yeah. And speaking, of deep, point. speaking of deep, go to Nicole6.com. Did you know, <laughs> did you know she's, her new book? Actually, I think everybody here would like it. <laughs> some fucked up shit. Is the fucked title. up shit. Some fucked up shit. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm excited I it. about it. Collection of short stories. and uh, They're ahead. twisted, and I use sex in a disturbing manner because I write scary stories. And, nice. they, you know, they're, just, they're interesting little supernatural adventures. And uh, so... And fucked up. Some you fucked should up uh, drop by the auditions if you want Go to. to. <laughs> I was waiting for this. I don't. I'm not really. I don't think I'd be a nylon girl. But you know, if someone wants to make a short fetish they film, I know Mark works on one. Let's do it. Let's make a short fetish film, Nicole. <laughs> we could do that. Let's do yes. that. <laughs> anyway, and, and please go to gothcomedian.com and check me out. Blue balls and all this weekend, next weekend, and the weekend after at the uh, at the Fringe Festival. I've been saying Fetish Festival all the week because I have you. But anyway, I want to thank everybody for being here. Everybody have a wonderfully Thanks, creepy week. Bye. <laughs>